Just after 7 p.m. on Wednesday, a puff of white smoke rose from the chimney of the Sistine Chapel in Rome, indicating that the 115 cardinals gathered at the Vatican had selected the Roman Catholic Church's 266th Pope. Shortly after, from the balcony of St. Peter's Basilica, Cardinal Jean-Louis Turan announced, Habimas Papam, we have a Pope, and introduced Argentina's Cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio as the Church's new leader. Cardinal Bergoglio, who succeeds Pope Benedict XVI, will be known as Pope Francis. He is not only the first Pope from South America, but he will be the first Jesuit to lead the world's 1.2 billion Catholics. Offering prayers for his predecessor and the thousands assembled in St. Peter's Square, 76-year-old Pope Francis will take the reins of a church struggling against a declining number of priests, sexual abuse scandals, and pressure to modernize its central administration. But the election of Pope Francis is a departure. As the first non-European leader in more than 1,000 years, his election is a clear indication of the church's intent to focus on the Southern Hemisphere, home to some of the world's largest concentrations of Catholics. While never having led the Catholic Church, the Jesuits have long been considered a very influential order. Born as a response to the Reformation in the 16th century, the approximate 20,000 all-male Jesuits take a vow of poverty and emphasize spiritual direction based on the spiritual exercises of founder St. Ignatius. It's reported that academically inclined Pope Francis, having been ordained as a priest in 1969, lived a simple life in Buenos Aires, shunning the chauffeur service offered to him as a bishop in the 1990s. And while his name was rarely mentioned before the conclave, his geographic origins, coupled with a reputation for modernizing the Argentine church and his belief in contraception to prevent the spread of disease, indicate that as a pope, he is viewed by the Vatican as a capable guide for the church as it navigates the 21st century. Christopher Booker, Financial Times. Buona notte e buon riposo. Yeah.